this is a quick tutorial about the amazing slowdowner let's click on this there you go okay let's make this larger so it's easier for you to see the controls click on the preferences uh, miscellaneous there you go let's go extremely large click on that it says that the new settings only will take effect after we start software so there you go let's get out of this quit let's get it back on and that are easier to see for you okay cool so here's a quick rundown so you can use amazing slowdowner as a cd player or as a file player by selecting these it's typically it selects it automatically uh, the right setting whether you depend on whether you put in a cd in your computer or if you just work with files audio files you already have on your computer so if i put a cd in my computer right now this will get activated and all the right here all the titles of all the songs on the would show up here and i could just click on the title and then slow the song down or change the pitch of the song but we're going to get to that here this here later on so most of the time i use it in this setting here because i have like 40 something thousand songs on my high drive so let's get out of these songs let's delete these songs now there you go cool so here's how easy it is to get songs into amazing slowdown the software is really really easy to use i click on my itunes i type in the song uh, that one like work with let's say roxanne by the police roxanne here's the song and i just drag the title and drop it on there and now the song is an amazing slowdowner so i just selected the software if i click my space bar now the song automatically starts playing let's get another song just to give you another example highway to hell to hell by ACDC again I drag the title drop it on here I mean highway to hell it's in the software now and again I start the song by either clicking here or by just hitting my space bar all that being said so we don't need iTunes anymore let's get this out of the way let's get that win this window back to the center okay so let's select Roxanne so you choose a song you want to play by selecting it and then hitting your space bar so let's move on to this now. There's an EQ section here. What, you, what will you use this EQ for? Let's say that you want to like learn a solo, let's say guitar, so your guitar player, you want to learn a guitar solo and the guitar solo is kind of buried in the mix or a rhythm guitar part. You can't quite hear the rhythm guitar part as well as you want to. By boosting, which means you move these sliders up by boosting these frequency here, the, the mid frequencies, what you have is that the guitar suddenly becomes much more noticeable. <laughs> So the guitar part becomes much louder. Um, Roxanne, the guitar part already is kind of loud, so maybe not the best example. Let's say, let's get Purple Haze. Purple Haze, there you go. Jimi Hendrix, let's get the studio, the album version. Let's fast forward to where the verses. <laughs> So this is the original setting here. Let's do this, clear presets. Let's get this to zero. Oh, what I just did, I point at the EQ section, I right click, I then choose clear presets and it brings, okay, it brings all the sliders back to zero. So this is the original mix. So let's say they have a hard time hearing what's going on in the guitar. You just boost, you bring up these sliders a bit. Suddenly the guitar is way way louder so let me right click again clear presets there you go all the sliders jumping back to zero so that's another thing you can do here right click then you have this list that shows up and then you do that click clear presets and everything jumps back to zero okay cool so that so in a nutshell so this helps you getting parts louder in the mix that you can't quite hear enough in the mix like keyboard parts for example you'll be sliding about these sliders also vocal parts will be like these the high more the high frequency and that slider here of course bass parts you'll be sliding these sliders up if you're a bass player and you can hear the bass part loud enough just move these up and the bass part will come out really nicely in the mix it will be much easier for you to learn that bass part let's move on to this, this is of course volume that's self-explanatory you make the song louder or quieter <clears throat> it's a volume control now these buttons here 
If I click on that, it takes out the EQ section, so I bypass the EQ. If you click on this, um, everything that's panned on the sides of the stereo mix get you hear really well, and everything that's panned in the center gets taken out of the mix. It's kind of like a little bit like karaoke, which is exactly why this is labeled KA. So the vocal is kind of very like reverberish and kind of gone in the mix. Uh, I mean, it's not entirely gone, you still hear it, but it's much softer than. Now you hear the mix as it is, and now you hear like a karaoke type of version where everything sounds more reverberish in this particular case now. So what happens is that it takes the, the middle information out of the mix, all the stuff that the engineer in the recording session who recorded the song, all the stuff that he panned towards the center of the mix gets taken out, and you only hear what's panned to the left and the right of the mix. So that's what this is for. Then here you can choose to hear the song as a stereo, which is what SD stands for, or as a mono mix. Uh, which again, these are all just tools to help you select certain parts more easily. Hearing certain parts in the mix more easily, they can't quite hear in the mix as well. And very quickly about this, these are just different algorithms which allow you to uh, save processor speed. Let's say, for example, that you have a slower computer with Type 1, um, the, so the sound is not as good that you're listening to, but because of that, the software also doesn't take up as much processor power supposedly like apparently the best sound you get if you choose type 4 so it's just like extra controls they have to optimize your system performance when you're using the software which leads us to like moving on to this now where the slider currently is the song currently starts from right there so 41 seconds so anytime i hit my space bar the song starts from right there if i want the song to start from right here for example 59 seconds now it always starts from here. So let's say that I want to learn the Highway to Hell solo. Okay, cool. So let's say you're learning the song. So I'll let this, I'll let this song play. The soul's about to start right there. Not sure if you notice, I clicked on this like start point now, and now the song is always going to start from right where I cued it in, from where I clicked the start point button. Now anytime I hit my space bar, the song starts from like a second or so before the solo I want to learn, which saves me a huge amount of time in learning solos. Because let's say that you want to learn the same solo, and you don't have the software from let's say iTunes, so you go to your iTunes, you find the song in here, uh, Highway to Hell. There you go. So the solo is at like 2.11, so I need to slide the slider all the way to 2.11. And then I'll learn that phrase and practice that phrase over and over. So anytime I want to play the phrase again along with recording, I need to take the slider, slide it back, hit my space bar. So this is a huge hassle. It's much, much more efficient, effective to just use the software and I only need to hit my space bar. I don't need to like grab my mouse, move the slider back. It just starts from the starting point. So let's say now that I learned the first phrase, I will move on to the next phrase, I repeat the first phrase like 10, 15, 20 times in a row, playing along with recording for maximum learning efficiency. And let's say that I learned up till there and a second before the next section, I, I clicked here on the starting point. So now the song is always gonna start from here. So then I practice that phrase, I play that over and over again, where I can play the phrase. So now I'm gonna have da da. I practice that over and over again. So you see how much more efficient this is. So you just, you choose your, while the section is playing that you can already play, the second before the new section comes up, you hit your new starting point, and now the song's always going to start from your new starting point where you can learn a new phrase, play the new phrase over and over again by just hitting your space bar. Over and over on your guitar, and then that way you work yourself section by section, phrase by phrase to the whole solo, not once having to touch your mouse, you just hit your space bar your space bar and then well you touch your mouse when you click on the start button here but that sets your new cue point and from there on 
All you need to do is hit your spacebar over and over again, and the song starts from the new starting point, from the new cue point, which totally beats having to like grab your mouse, pull the slider back in iTunes, hit your spacebar, so you learn songs and solos much more quickly, much more efficiently. You can also set an ending point, which you can set by moving the slider about, let's say, back to Roxanne. Let's say that I learned the song up to, let's say, right there, 58 seconds. So I hit my ending point right where I want the song section to end. So now anytime I'm going to hit my space bar, it plays up till there. So the song automatically stops at the section up till where I need to practice up till where I learned um, song material. Now when I hit this here, I click on this little like V thingy here. Loop now, it's always going, it's going to like repeat over and over again. So now I don't even have to take my hands away from the guitar anymore. So it keeps looping by itself, which leads to the next section now. Then we're almost done with the tutorial. Stretch. What stretch does is it stretches the samples out. In other words, you make a song slower or faster by clicking in the bar now you can tell here that these numbers change so it says stretch here it says stretch there so anytime I click in the bar it goes up in increments of 10% when I click on the arrows I can find you and goes up in increments of 1% now when do you use which like which option this or that well let's say they have like a really tough solo that you're learning and it's fast, they have a hard time keeping up ten, ten, technical facility wise with solo. So let's say they slow down, let's say they slow it down 90, 100 or so percent. Right? After you repeated that phrase that you're learning like 10, 15, 20, 30 times in a row, at some point it's, it's going to become easier. In which case, you can, if you slow down that much, you probably can like speed it up in increments of 10 percent. It's not going to make that much of a difference if you slow the song down that much but at some point you're gonna to get to the point where it's gonna become more challenging again as you keep speeding it up a little bit at a time and you're not gonna be able to keep up anymore in which case now you just start slowing down uh, spe uh, speeding the song up in a little uh, smaller increments of only a couple of percent at a time so you don't have the big 10 percent leaps anymore so that's why you would use arrows versus clicking in the bar so let's get this back to zero the pitch so as i said earlier you can change the tempo of songs or you can change the pitch of songs. So pitch means key, it means how high or how low the song is. So this is the original, the original um, recording. If I click here now, it goes up in increments of one semitone. So you can see the number going up. You can also change in increments of one cent at a time. So what is a semitone? A semitone is also called a half step in music theory. That's two adjacent frets on a guitar which corresponds to two adjacent keys on a piano. So you basically go up to the next key, the next key, the next key, the next fret, the next fret, the next fret, where you play a piano or a guitar, or the next fret down, next fret down, next fret down, next key down, next key down on the piano. So this is going up in pitch, this is going down in pitch, one half step at a time. So this is going up and down in pitch one cent at a time. What is a cent? The cent is 100 increment of a half step. So let's get back to zero. Okay, cool. So when would you use this? Well, a couple of examples will be, for example, if you want to learn a Jimi Hendrix song or a Stevie Ray Vaughan song, and, they tu and the song you want to learn, they tune down their guitar a half step. So it's a hassle to have to tune your six strings down a half step just to learn that one song. Instead, you just click there and ta-da! You tune the song up to your guitar and they have to tune your guitar down to the song. So it saves you a huge amount, amount of time. Sometimes you learn, you want, a recording you want to learn you will notice that it's not in this key and not in that key they're kind of like off less than a half step which should be the case with highway to hell for example let me play this for a second this is the original tuning let's uh, make this a little louder for you so that's an a chord checks out my a sounds very slightly higher so when we play let's play the recording let's play along So it's kind of like this very like slightly unpleasant clash of frequencies between the sound of my guitar and sound of the recording. And the reason is because they're 
a little flat in the recording. The whole band of obviously is in tune with one another. All the musicians are in tune with one another, but the um, they're not in tune with a standard 440 hertz reference pitch, which is what all tunes are calibrated to. So as a matter of fact, in this particular song, there's flat, they're flat 40 something, 46, 48 cents. So. So rather than have to tune your guitar down 40 something cents, which is a complete hassle because tuners are not calibrated to do so, you just tune the recording up 40 something cents and check this out now. Much better in tune. Same key. Oftentimes, a part you want to learn might be panned here to the right side of the mix or to the left side of the mix. So with this cool feature here, when you click and the slider jumps all the way to the right side, right now when we're hearing the recording, notice how much louder the guitar is. And that's because the guitar part in this song is panned towards the right in the mix. So by selecting the right hand channel, we only hear what is mixed on that side in the mix by the recording engineer who was on the recording session for that song and we don't hear the material in the stereo field that is panned to the left side of the mix so whatever the part we're learning if it's panned to the right suddenly really jumps out and sounds much louder which makes it much easier to learn that part so let's see if there's anything in stereo field. yeah let's say purple haze <laughs> So it sounds like guitar is totally panned to the right here, so by doing that. Yeah, not much different because it's really panned so ha hard right. Uh, let's fast forward a bit. Let's turn down the volume a bit. Notice how the vocals are gone because they're totally panned to the right, which is why I put the slider here, it sounds really loud. When I go here, the vocals are entirely gone. The result of that is that you hear the guitar part much better now, so it's a huge advantage when you're a guitar player. Um, you take out whatever you don't want in a mix by moving that slider left or right, and you hear the part that you want to learn much more easily in the mix. So, what else? Oh yeah, when you right click here, you have all these things here that you can do so you can save song files with the changes actually which is really cool so let's say they want like learn let's say that purple haze will be tuned down a half step so when you click here then you tune the song up a half step and by saving song as you can choose mp3 or aiff file whatever file type. by saving the song now you would if you choose processed stereo which is what you want i click ok it's going to save a copy of that song as a CD file or MP3 file with this programmed into the mix. So your song would be actually a song that sounds a half step higher than the original. So, um, which is a cool feature. So you can like, if you have multiple songs, you can save all of them at the same time. You can sort them by alphabetically by name. So there's all these different ways of organizing things. I can save your playlist as I can type in here red hot chili peppers save i saved it to my desktop let's get rid of my itunes window so this here now let's say that i go out of the software i click on this it brings up my whole playlist again so that way you don't have to like keep dragging songs in here out of there like you can save your whole playlist so this is your Red Hot Chili Peppers album, so to speak, that you're learning. And you could have like a file here, Red Hot Chili Peppers album, then Jimi Hendrix songs, then another file, uh, ACDC, a Black in Black album. And by clicking on the file, it opens up only that playlist that you saved. Um, if you have tons of songs in here, as a guitar teacher, for example, after like a week or so, I have like 20, 30, 40 songs in here. It will take forever to just do to song by song to delete, return, delete, return over and over again. So I can just delete everything all at once. Uh, clear playlist, there it is. Ta -da. So there you go. So then there's more stuff you can do here. Preferences, there's all these settings you can choose, but you don't, I hardly ever touch this stuff really. So there you have it. So that's a quick rundown of how Amazing Slowdown works.